Hello everyone, hope you've had a fantastic Christmas. Johnny, did you have a good Christmas? Oh, it was fantastic. Great Christmas dinner. And I'm just ready for more football now. Yeah, I was absolutely stuffed. I went to Cramlington for mine. I couldn't move after that. And of course, as, as you've all seen, I went to Leicester on Christmas night. And um, yeah, we are after the Leicester game. We're not really going to talk about Leicester. That's gone by now. We look forward to playing them again in uh, the League Cup uh, quarterfinals. Thank you for all of you who tuned in last week for that. It was a great stream. Uh, transfers and rumours and, you know, it's going to be, you, whichever YouTube channel you watch, it's going to be everywhere. Newspaper articles, it's going to be all over Twitter. Look, if you're like me, I don't know how you feel, Johnny, but if you're like me, I hate doing these transfer videos, but I understand, you know, from a revenue stream why so many outlets do it. Yeah, I think I think everyone likes a bit of speculation. Everyone likes a little bit of, what's the word, drama in your life if it, when it comes to transfers because they want to see the best players play for their, like, play for their team. And it's, even when Newcastle didn't have this takeover, you know, there was still people doing these videos and you kind of go, one eye go, no, I wouldn't mind him at Newcastle, wouldn't mind him at Newcastle. But now because since the, ta like the takeover has happened, obviously Newcastle being linked to every player under the sun. We will talk about a couple of players in a second. However, if we are going to go, go and dip into the market, are we going to do similar to what we're doing to Isaac, some of his our bonus instalments? Dan Byrne was as well. Don't think we paid him straight out, right? Um, who else is there as well? There's a couple of people off the top of my head that I'm trying to think. Uh, Nick Pope was another one. We didn't pay outright for him. And I'm sure there's another one off the top. He'll come back to us. And do you see Newcastle going down that route again? Trip, yeah, that was it. Yeah. Do you, see, do you see Newcastle going down that route where they want to identify, I don't know, James Madison or someone like that? They won't splash 30 million. Well, I know it'll be higher than that, but they'll may maybe 10 million per season. Maybe. Um, I, I don't know how Newcastle are going, to, are going to deal with this window because I think there'll probably be debates behind the scenes going, well, if we buy two outstanding players with what we've got right now, potentially Newcastle should be in the champ well, I say in the Champions League, but at least contesting for that Champions League places right to the very end, whether we get there or not to the matter. But you, you would think Newcastle need a bigger squad because I'm, I'm going to say I think it's a 90% chance that Newcastle are going to be playing some sort of European football next season. So you need to get players in. I think the, the, the obvious, the obvious uh, stumbling point is the financial side of things. How much money can Newcastle, can Newcastle actually spend? No one really knows that for sure, do they? Do you think Eddie Howe's playing it down? Because I think he does a little bit with the financial fair play. And I think that's why Newcastle don't splash the cash and go, right, there's 60 million. Um, I think it'll be instalments to get around the financial fair play. But I want to ask you, because you said it off camera before, who's the one player you would love to see here? Oh, Jude Bellingham. No, I know it's... it's, it's I'm not going to say it's unrealistic because... Someone's on Twitter right now saying, Johnny thinks we're going to get Jude Bellingham. Uh, they can say Johnny would love to see Jude Bellingham in a Newcastle show. That's what they should say. But in all seriousness, he is the biggest talent in world football right now. If you take away, well, at, at his age, he's 19. He, he is literally the player that everybody wants. Now, it would be a statement signing if Jude Bellingham came to Newcastle. Now, can we sell Newcastle to him? I think he can if you're in the Champions League, but it's, I think it's still very, very difficult. He's got to look. He's got the, the biggest clubs in the world going to be after him. I think Liverpool, Real Madrid are leading the race at the minute. Man City are, are behind the scenes a little bit. But could you imagine him at, at Newcastle? He would... Oh, wow. Him and Bruno in the midfield. I know it's a bit, it's a bit more fantasy, but... We're not saying that's going to happen. That's just no, Johnny's, it's, Johnny's dream signing. It's my dream signing. I think if Newcastle get into the Champions League, you could at least be in the conversation. If you're not in the Champions League, it's going to be very, very difficult. Yeah, I don't necessarily kind of think of the top of my head who's my dream one. I think mine are still... Madison? I wouldn't say, oh, we've got to go get him. I think he'll improve with midfield, but you probably have to give him a little bit more licence to get a little bit more forward. And we're, we're forever linked to James Madison. Just going to, before we get on to Madison, just with Bellingham, you know, that's your dream sign, but how much is he going to cost? Oh, I think Dortmund can pretty much put whatever price they want. Maybe over 100 million. Probably 120 million, maybe 125 mil. But he's 19. That's why people will probably buy him because if you put him on a six-year deal, he's still only 25. It's mental. It's absolutely mental. So you could afford to go. Do you know what? Yes, it's it's a ridiculous um, <clears throat> fee, but it'll be worth it down the line. But. Look, do I see it happening? No. I think maybe Real Madrid, Liverpool, 
are probably ahead of us. But it's, it's, it is the dream signing for me. Yeah, I would say the elephant in the room, but we're not in the room because we're outside. But James Madison, it just won't go away. Obviously, he was asked when on England duty. The two lads were winding him up a little bit with the Boxing Day fixture. Interesting how that will go down, of course, uh, down on Leicester. Uh, will he be a Newcastle player by the time we play them in the Cup, which will be cup-tied anyways, so he won't feature for either side. Is that the more realistic one? It's more realistic because... James Madison's got 18 months left on his contract. So if you're Leicester, you either need to tie him down on a new deal or you sell him. Because make or break. It is make or break. I think, I think Leicester will go, well, we can't do what we're doing with Yuri Tielemans because Yuri Tielemans got six months left on his contract and we're not going to get anything for him. Would you accept waiting for him in the summer if Leicester said, do you know what, we'll sell him to you. We can't yet because let's, they're not safe. I think they will be safe, don't get me wrong. I think they will climb the table. But if they say, do you know what, We'll sell you in, in summer for for 50, 50 million. You can't you, you can't get fifty million for James Madison when he's got a year after his contract. I'm but sorry. would you accept that? Forget, well, forget about the fee for a second. Then, if Leicester turned around and said we're kind of selling in January, come to us in the summer. Would you? If I said right now, say I would. Um, no, and my reason is, if you put James Madison in this Newcastle team now. Newcastle don't finish outside the top six. That's how much he would improve Newcastle if he stays fit. You reckon the squad can it? They possibly could, but if you're adding quality players, and we're talking about other options off the bench, the question is who do you drop Madis, uh, drop, drop them for? But that's a nice debate to have. I think if you, if you put Madison in that midfield, you've seen his stats, you've seen the amount of goals he gets, you've seen the amount of assists he gets don't have many midfielders like that in the Premier League if you do that and you add X amount of goals from now to the end of the season how can Newcastle not finish in the top six there's loads of players linked you'll see them the Chronicle national newspapers Marcus Tram obviously Eddie Howell uh, last week was joking on saying thanks there is a lot of players that Eddie Howell will have on, on, a, on a short list maybe a long list uh, there'll be players that are here that other clubs will want to have a look at. Look at Real Madrid, they wanted Bruno last summer. So there will be a lot of um, tit-for-tat speculation, we know that. Uh, we will be bringing you, uh, probably for the first time, a lot more transfer videos, as you've asked for them. Um, so we will be bringing you a lot more of that. Uh, there was one final uh, question that I had, Johnny, with this squad. Do you, just departures, do you see the likes of maybe... A Matt Ritchie leaving permanently, or a pot, I would say Mankio normally, but because of Kraft's injury, is it going to be like the likes of Gillespie? Maybe one of the goalkeepers heads out on loan. It's going to be like fringe players. But Gillespie's not even in the squad, so I don't think it really makes a difference. I think, look, Matt Ritchie, I think, is surplus to requirements at Newcastle. You know, and a terrific servant, but he's he's barely he's just about getting into the matchday squad. Like he was in the matchday squad for Bournemouth. You know, he's, he's, he's not part of Eddie Howe's plans, but he's been absolutely, like I say, as I mentioned, a brilliant servant. Ryan Fraser's the interesting one for me, because I think, I think it's probably, I think there's more that meets the eye. I think he wants to move back down south as well, and I think Southampton have been linked. Didn't he want to move up north to get close to Aberdeen, even though Aberdeen's like still four hours away? Yeah, it's a little bit closer than it is in Southampton, let's be honest. Just a bit. Or Bournemouth, rather, but I, I think there has been speculation that he would prefer to move back down to like Southampton Bournemouth way don't think he's going to sign for Bournemouth but he definitely I think could sign for Southampton you can't sell Mankiro unfortunately because he crafts injured um, Jamal Lewis I, I, I think Jamal Lewis and Elliot, Anderson, Elliot Anderson should go out on loan Jamal Lewis what's happened to him and if one of those goes out on loan or if it, if it is a Ryan Fraser I wouldn't be against someone who's happy to sit on the bench even if it's a loan yeah. Because if we're going to splash the cash on a Madison or a winger or whoever it is in January, I personally don't think there'll be loads of activity. I think there'll be probably one in, one out. But if we are going to go daft and push it for European football, if someone leaves like a Fraser, it makes sense for me. Just go and get a loan player. Someone who's happy to sit on the bench and try and get a move to Newcastle. That would probably make more I, sense. I don't think Newcastle will do that. I think if they get rid of a Ryan Fraser, they'll bring somebody in, whether they'll be on loan or not. But I think that, that player will be like... I want to try and get in the starting eleven. The problem is we look at the quality of the, on the wings with Almiron and St. Maximum. They're injured. It's Murphy and Fraser. And that's not. It's not strong enough. 
and now we're seeing the likes of Joe Litton pushed over there and if Isaac when he's back which won't be too long he could be pushed out there so it's, a, it's another one for debate we want to know what you think of course in the comments down there below drop us a like uh, we're in between the horrible period of Christmas and New Year what do we do for a few days what 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 time of the day is it what day is it it's kind of at the moment until the new year kicks in and of course we've got Leeds on the horizon so Leeds will be absolutely buzzing that they've got this place new year's eve their fans but yeah from yourself and johnny from st james park we'll see you very soon